There's no good time for such a conflict, but this is probably one of the worst times. Do you think, though, there's going to be a difference depending on who gets into the White House after November? A possible Biden administration can back off from the current sort of uh, headbutting that's going on, uh, take a fresh view, but it may come back with a more uh, sort of uh, coalitional structure, uh, taking uh, sort of the Europeans, the Japanese along with it in a discussion of the relationship. So I think there is a possibility for an improvement, even while it doesn't necessarily mean that the U.S. will back off from its longstanding uh, concerns. Under a Biden administration? Possibly even under a Trump administration, if there's a, if there's a rethink. But again, there's greater promise in the Biden administration for a smoother renegotiation because the Biden administration doesn't carry the baggage of the immediate past. My expectation would be that if, if uh, former Vice President Biden were to win, that uh, U.S. foreign policy would, be, would uh, revert more closely to where it has been for decades uh, compared with the Trump administration. An American commitment to multilateralism, which is an American commitment to the United States being perceived as a leader in, a, in, in the world in a positive sense, along with its allies and partners, uh, including in the Asia-Pacific region. But won't President Trump dial back on this anti-China rhetoric after the election, if, let's say, he comes in again? Well, with President Trump, you never really know. Uh, he's proven to be, uh, you know, he's proven to, to uh, you know, say a lot of things and do a lot of things that are surprising. So, um, you know, it's a bit of a parlor game in Washington and elsewhere around the world trying to, to determine what this administration is going to do next. There's a longstanding tradition of saying t some tough rhetoric about China uh, leading up to a U.S. presidential election. And then after the election that, uh, you know, there's a reversion to the mean. I would not anticipate the Trump administration all of a sudden uh, reverting to what uh, the Obama administration was doing vis-a-vis -vis its bilateral relations with China. Uh, at the same time, there is some prospect that they will not um, continue to escalate the rhetoric uh, and therefore the policy questions involving China. I also would hope and expect that the administration would be more willing to embrace its allies and partners in the Asia Pacific in particular. The Japans, the Koreas, uh, uh, the Singapores of, of the Asia Pacific are the, you know, being caught between these two giants and being forced to go in, in one direction or another. And there's real risk there as, if, as the U.S.-China bilateral relationship erodes, real risk that America's historic allies will begin to peel off and, and become closer to China, even up to and including becoming uh, clo very close to, their, to the Chinese uh, orbit. I also think the Chinese, while having done a lot on getting the economy back, haven't managed the geopolitical uh, sort of uh, spillovers as well. And that's important because uh, I, I don't think uh, sort of the U.S. administration is solely to blame for the kind of conflictual situation we see now between the two largest economies in the world. I think the Chinese also have had a hand in, in the kinds of issues they have pursued. And I think it is, it is important that both sides dial back because this is the worst time to have a trade and investment conflict.